This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. It is the Wednesday before Selection Sunday, which means we are in the thick of the men's college basketball conference tournaments. We're going to talk about the Big Ten conference tournament, talk about some tournament games, add likes, and get you ready for what should be a fun week across men's college basketball. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com, joined here once again by Dr. Ed Feng. Find his work over at the Power rank.com check out ed on twitter at the power rank and on the football analytics show ed it is a delightful time of year a delight to have you on the show how are you doing today i'm doing well i'm excited about all the college basketball it's really fun uh, with the conference tournaments uh it was pretty nice watching gonzaga look pretty good last night against st mary's yeah and yeah i'm just excited to watch a lot of basketball get my analysis all straightened up help people win their pool and uh, yeah, I just feel like I'm going to be more of help this year because it's it's kind of wide open. It is. And I think that's an important time to have numbers on your side to kind of know what to expect. If there is a lack of consensus, that means that people may get overconfident in one team, run with that and stuff like that. If it's wide open, you can deviate without being dumb. We talk about that a lot on our daily fantasy shows. Being right. different without being dumb is very valuable. And I think that especially... From a bracket perspective, we can a lot of times see groupthink. Like wisdom of the crowds is one thing, groupthink is another. And I think it's important to kind of differentiate those. I wouldn't be shocked at if we see something this year where one team gets a bit more consensus around them they, than they potentially should. Maybe, but I kind of don't like. Well, actually, yeah, that would be good. Yeah, that would be good. I'm I'm actually more kind of hoping Houston loses early. <laughs> In the American conference, like I would oh, to like lower enthusiasm around them, lower, lower enthusiasm. Yeah. So we'll see. They're not really a blue bud. So I don't know how much public attention they're going to get in brackets. I, yeah. I would like to see less. Maybe, maybe, uh, I don't know who can go on a run. Yeah. Maybe, maybe UCLA can go on a run. They're yeah. blue blood. Yeah. They're playing well. Um, yeah, I think there's a there there's there's a lot going on. I've been working on uh, an email newsletter series, just kind of laying out a lot of things for bracket strategies, and I think interesting tips from from analytics. And I had originally planned to write something about you know the parity in college basketball this yeah. year, but then I just I'm starting to see this everywhere, and I was like, ah, people know, we'll skip it. <laughs> parity in college basketball. Yeah, and it I mean was that's little... basically as I'm as I'm like digging through these teams. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm seeing, man. I mean, there's not many teams I I really trust. Yeah, and that'll be a big discussion next uh, next week. We're gonna have so selection Sunday is Sunday, obviously, and then on Monday we're gonna have our typical NCAA tournament live stream. We're gonna have uh, Ed on as always, and also Bennett Corcoran. Uh, we're gonna talk to him about his thoughts on the tournament. We'll talk to Ed about what his numbers are saying. I'll go through a number fires number say, try to get you a, a read on how to fill out your bracket. We've done this show for six or seven years now at this point. It's been a staple on this show. It's been a fun one to record every year. Uh, so we're going to have Ed and Bennett on. If you want to watch that show live, it'll be on the FanDuel YouTube page, 6 p.m. Eastern on Monday. So we don't typically go live, but we will for this one. So Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern, FanDuel YouTube page. It will go up here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed as well. So. The Monday show later in the day, but it will also be live over on the Fandle YouTube page talking about everything you need to know for filling out your bracket. We're talking strategy based on things book or Ed is literally written books on. We'll talk about individual teams, paths to the tournament, and much more. Uh, Bennett, uh, we've had him on the past couple of years, Bennett of shot quality now. We'll get his read on um, this from a betting perspective too, try to get you to, to an idea of what to expect but then the tournament, but Ed, I think with this, it's worth reiterating team analysis matters a lot, but this is a situation where game theory and strategy also play a big role in determining how you'll do in your bracket. For sure. Yeah. You, you definitely need uh, to understand that champions are the most important choice in your bracket and you need have a good grasp of, of these top teams and, you know, which teams have kind of come out of the blue and are sitting there at the top on the one seed line, but, Maybe don't have the talent. And then maybe some teams that 
aren't being talked about at all right now because they had uh they didn't have the best season, but you know, we're near the top of the preseason AP poll, which is kind of a, a sign of strength. So so lots to talk about there. And we'll tailor the show towards what matters most. So we'll spend the bulk of the opening part talking about national champion contenders. We'll talk about final four contenders. We'll focus a, a tiny bit on like first round stuff, but because of the way things are weighted within NCAA tournament pools, they don't matter as much. So we're not going to put a, the majority of our focus there. Um, so we'll ca cater it towards what matters most to get you ready for your bracket pools. Again, that'll be on the Covering the Spread podcast feed and the FanDuel YouTube page. So go subscribe to both those wherever uh, you are choosing to consume that on Monday, again, live at 6 p.m. Eastern. Are you looking to have a stake in the Players' Championship this weekend? Well, FanDuel has you covered on the DFS side with the PGA Eagle, which is now live. Test your knowledge of the PGA Tour by putting together a six-person lineup while staying under the salary cap and using FanDuel's live scoring feature. Follow along as you compete for a share of $200,000 with first place taking home $40,000 all for just a $7.77 entry. Whether it's household names like John Rahm and Roy McIlroy or lesser known golfers, uh, there are plenty of options for you to fill out your lineup as you compete for first place. Thursday will be here before you know it. So submit your lines today on FanDuel. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. Let's talk now about these conference tournament games. And Ed, when we talk about the NBA in terms of betting things during the playoffs, we have to account for rotations. We get tighter rotations and the NBA team is not conserving guys till later on in the year. What about on the college basketball side of things? Do we need to make alterations there to account for the fact that these games just matter more and guys aren't being conserved for down the road? I certainly think you should do that. It's not something that I am particularly good at. Um, I, I haven't really embarked on that before, but if you know someone that has some pretty good player ratings, I definitely think that's something that is, uh, is, is useful to do. I know that's something Dr. Bob does when, when he gets into the NBA playoffs and, and I presume he's doing it for college basketball as well. So yeah, I mean, you're going to get, and this is, I mean, I guess the part of the analysis that I think makes that is related to the, the, the tightening of rotations is, is I really try to look at star players, right? Yeah. Like who are the star players out there that are going to get picked high in the NBA draft? And not only picked high in the NBA draft, but can actually do something on the college basketball court. I, I know it seems a little bit weird, but not every one of them <laughs> has been successful right. at, the, at the college level in, in a way that, that you really trust. Um, so, you know, for example, like a guy named, like Brandon Miller at Alabama. This is a guy that can fill it up. He's going to be a lottery pick probably going to be playing more minutes uh, as soon as the SEC tournament starts. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely something to think about. I mean, you want to think about the the upside of of players, right? And then and then maybe like something like a Zach Eady, who's a big guy, probably don't want to put too many more minutes on the seven foot four inch frame, right? And we talked before last week about how I don't really trust the, the talent on the rest of the team. I think a great Great Purdue team plays really well together, uh, but we st we've seen them start to decline a little bit. And uh, yeah, so may maybe not a team there that those rotation minutes matter as much uh, heading heading into the postseason. So maybe maybe another knock on them. I'm not really sure. We'll see. Who knows? Maybe maybe Zachy starts playing 38 minutes and, and I look like an idiot. But um, definitely something that you should think about. Um, try to find those player ratings and uh, go from there. So best case scenario is we have a player level model we can adjust based on minutes and stuff like that. But realistically, most of us can't do that. So would you recommend the best shortcut being checking out like NBA draft, like mock drafts effectively, uh, try to decide yeah. which teams have that like top level talent to may concentrate more on those guys this time of year? I mean, I certainly look for that. I certainly look at... Uh... You know, I, I usually look at ESPN and the athletic for their mock drafts to figure out who's who's pretty high. And yeah, so I certainly recommend doing that. I mean, if you have a subscription to Ken Palm and you really should uh, just just look at look at the offensive rating of players. Right. If they're yeah. if it's up in the one teens, like that's a pretty good offensive player. That's pretty efficient. You know, look at their two point three point field goal shooting rate. So you can get a sense for that uh, with just kind of those those raw metrics and um yeah, no, I, I definitely think that's a pretty good thing to do.
And it's something that like, even if we can't do it perfectly, you should do something to account for it. And I think that that is a good workaround for those who may not have the most intimate knowledge of these rosters, intimate knowledge of the individual difference makers. There are ways you can account for that without spending gobs and gobs of time trying to catch up with this regard. Now, you mentioned Purdue. Uh, let's take a look at the Big Ten at conference tournament odds right now as this tournament gets underway tonight. Purdue, the favorite, they're plus 160. They were plus, I think, 185 or 190 as of yesterday. So there's been some interest in Purdue entering the tournament. And we talk about being skeptical of Purdue quite a bit. The problem that I've run into, Ed, with this is that the conference isn't that great, I don't think. So right. in theory, fading Purdue makes a lot of sense. I agree with your, your analysis there. I just don't know where to turn when I want to do so. So when you look at the Big Ten right now, any value for you outside of uh, when you look at these conference tournament outrights? This was a pretty fun exercise because I think this is where you want to – I think there's a lot of parity in the conference, and so this is where you kind of want to lean on numbers to figure out – where you might get a little bit of an edge. So Purdue is the best team in the conference, and the margin is, you know, somewhat big, at least two or three points uh, to the next team. My models kind of uh, have a variety, you know, you know, when teams are close together, one model might tell you one thing and another model might tell you another. So the member model that I, I kind of trust the most, that that tends to be more reactive, tends to be more aggressive, actually has Iowa as the second best team in the conference. Um, so Fran McCaffrey's team, uh, you know, I, I like Iowa at 14 to one. I have a little bit there to uh, uh, for them to win the big 10 tournament. And then in my other model, it tends to be a little bit more aggressive, tends to emphasize what has happened over the course of the season, tends to dampen outliers. Uh, that model has Illinois as the second best team in the conference. So, um, you know, plus 13 to one is another thing I, I just put a little bit on today. And there's there's five teams that both models think are the next level of uh, teams in the Big Ten. And that's Indiana, Michigan State. Uh, we're going to skip Maryland and, and sorry, Northwestern. As well. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Illinois, Iowa, and Michigan. So mm -hmm. that's what my number says. The, the next batch of teams uh, is in the Big Ten. So... Um, yeah, look, Purdue should win. They should be the favorite. Yeah. But, you know, like almost even odds to win seems a little, I mean, not quite. I guess plus 160. Yeah. Um, it's not quite. Uh, it's It seems a little high. So yeah. I, I definitely think this is a conference where you can, you know, take a chance with a couple long shots. Uh, hope Purdue has a bad shooting day and, and uh, bows out. So Purdue again, plus 160, Illinois 13 to 1, Iowa 14 to 1. When you look at both your numbers, combining the different models, combining what you've seen from these teams across the course of the year, which model do you think you agree more with? Are you leaning towards the Iowa side if you're making one bet? Are you leaning towards Illinois? What do you feel is the the better value between those two? Yeah, honestly, I don't really know because I haven't been yeah. really digging into Iowa or Illinois because yeah. I don't think either has a prayer to win the tournament. <laughs> and that's where I try to keep all my attention at. Um, I do trust the models and, and, I, and I would put those two teams ahead of the other four that are ahead of them there. So I think that's where I think the value is. Um, I think they're two pretty good coaches, coaches that I respect. Um, Fran, Fran McCaffrey is just the funniest coach in America. Did you see the stare down? I didn't see the stare down, but I, I've seen like this like scale that exists online and it's like the Fran McCaffrey eruption scale. And it's like based right. on the, the redness of his face. Um, and he's hit like Mach 1 or I don't know, uh, DEFCON 1, whatever that may be. Uh, several like he got kicked out against Northwestern, I think. Um, he's hit the top of that scale a couple times this year. And like, right. it's it's entertaining, if nothing else. Uh, at the end of the Michigan State game, he uh, instead of screaming at the ref, he had a little stare down with the ref. <laughs> so for about 15 seconds, he and the ref, you know, were like, uh, so "He's got a change up. He is. He's not just the heater. He's got a change up in his arsenal got, too. I he's like got it. The change up. And the ref played ball with him, so there's yeah. a little bit of a stare down. And it was kind of a remarkable game because they were at home. They were down 10 with like a minute and a half to go, and they came back and won the game in overtime. Yeah. So the stare down led led to a win he's adaptable um he's evolving he's finding ways uh to to change things up uh so i will 14 happy 
Absolutely. 14 to one. Yeah. 14 to one, uh, potentially good value there. Also 13 to one for Illinois where Ed is liking right now on the big 10 side of things. Now the ACC tournament already underway, uh, Syracuse lost this afternoon. Jim Beheim kind of sounds like he might've retired in his post game, but also <laughs> unclear who can say, um, weird situation there, but entering play, these odds are not up right now because the, the tournament is underway, but entering play Duke was the favorite at plus 260. When you look at the ACC, Ed, any teams you think are undervalued in that market as as things reopen uh, heading into Thursday, uh, once we see those top four teams get into play tomorrow? No, I, I think the conference sucks in general. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's really no teams to write home about and say, hey, I really like this team. I think it starts at the top of the two Blue Blood programs that had the ingenious idea of hiring head coaches with zero head coaching experience. I was pretty critical of North Carolina last year when they – they they hired Hubert Davis to to be the coach and then immediately looked like an idiot as they went all the way to the title game and came within a couple buckets of uh, beating Kansas for the, the national title. Four of those top players are back uh, from that starting lineup and I don't know I think they were preseason number one and they've been terrible. They they might not make the tournament and uh, I think they could have done better with the coach with just a little bit of experience. John Shire takes over at Duke. I do believe there is some talent there. Uh, it's really not showing up. Uh, so, you know, I mean, when in the model I trust the most, I have Duke in North Carolina, 23rd and 25th. Um, so, again, neither, not not really excited about either team. Virginia is another interesting team. My other model really likes Virginia. Uh, both models have them as, the you know, in the top three in the conference. Tony Bennett is, is obviously a quality coach, although he really hasn't had – the type of offensive players that he did in 2019 when they won the NCAA tournament. I think he'll get the back there at some point. Um, probably not this year. So the ACC is not a conference that I'm, I'm particularly high about. And, uh, you know, no no true contenders coming out yeah. of there. And uh, again, those odds not up right now for the ACC, but sounds like Ed is probably staying away from that regardless. Okay, let's open things up and talk about some actual games because we've got some games scheduled for later on Wednesday. We're recording this Wednesday afternoon, potentially games up for Thursday as well. Ed, when you look at the odds board right now, any games where you're seeing value based on your numbers? Yeah, let's let's head to one of the first games for tomorrow. Uh, FanDuel has been kind enough to put this up already. And uh, Baylor is a four and a half point point favorite against Iowa State. And I think that's pretty interesting. So first, my numbers don't think that the spread should be uh, that large. Uh, so one of my models has Baylor by about a point and a half on a neutral court, court there. Baylor and Iowa State just played. Baylor was at home. Iowa State actually destroyed them on the road. And I don't want to take make too much about you know one game and, and the result in any particular game, but I will point out that the market actually closed with Baylor as a six and a half point favorite in that game. So, uh, you know, home court's usually three points at least in 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 college basketball. So that would make it at least three and a half. My model has it all the way down at one and a half. Uh, I kind of feel like this is something that's going to move in the direction of Ohio Iowa State. I definitely bet it at plus four and a half um, because of my numbers, because of what, you know, because they just played, because the market, at, you know, had it at um, at six and a half and closed at six and a half. I think that does suggest value. So I do like Iowa State in that, that opening game of the Big 12 tournament. And that is, again, for Thursday. Uh, that is at 12.30 p.m. Eastern uh, for Iowa State versus Baylor. Iowa State currently plus four and a half. And, Ed, for people who have listened to this show for a long time, they kind of know what you're talking about. You're comparing the closing market versus where things are at right now. For people who may be newer to this, why does that matter for you? Why are you focusing on the closing number in that game in terms of predicting what we should expect for things playing out in the rematch? For sure. I mean, college basketball spreads are just so sharp at this point in the season. Uh, you really kind of cross your fingers and, and hope the public gets involved in the NCAA tournament so you can actually find some value uh, betting those spreads. But right now it's really sharp. And if, if Baylor just closed as minus six and a half at home against Iowa State, that's probably a pretty good assessment of where those two teams are. You consider that it's roughly three points of, of home court. Um, and Iowa State just killed them. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe, well, this is, this is the market opening up. I doubt too many 
sharps have bet into this number uh, already. I don't know. Maybe maybe there is some thought that that Baylor is going to tighten up their their lineup. I, I don't really know, as we talked about before. Uh, so yeah, I mean, yeah, look, look where things close. I mean, that's a pretty good indication of, of what to expect. And, and, uh, I think, I think that that number is pretty sharp and that's, that's why I mentioned it. I do think there's some value. I think, I think it's going to close at three and a half or, or less. And you've talked about this in the past, but your model does weigh in the closing number for games, correct? Like you factor that in, in your evaluation of teams. It, I do. Yeah. So basically what you're taking is the knowledge given to you by the betting public and applying that by basically making the very fair assumption that the that markets are efficient, which, hey, they typically are, and applying that to future games. And when you do that right. with Iowa State versus Baylor, it says there's value in Iowa State plus four and a half as they face Baylor once again, basically. So you're using the market to help beat the market, which I think is a really smart way to play things. Absolutely. And and you have to understand that, that the market at different times is going to be sharper. I think right. we talked about that a lot at the NFL. You're going to have an easier time finding value the first three weeks of the season than in the playoffs. That is absolutely true in college basketball. The market's pretty sharp right now. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's not like we're having the same conversation in November where, you know, it, it, it wouldn't be as valid a point to look at where something right. just closed. Right, exactly. Okay, so Ed is looking at Iowa State plus four and a half against Baylor for that game on Thursday, but also some Big Ten conference tournament futures like in Iowa, 14 to one, Illinois, 13 to one, looking for a route for potentially fading Purdue in the Big Ten. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. But as mentioned, we are back once again next week on Monday night for our NCAA tournament live stream. Ed will be with me, Bennett Corcoran will be with me, breaking down everything you need to know to win your tournament pool we'll talk about strategy talk about each region talk about national champions the things that matter for filling out a good brackets so ed uh good luck to you until then enjoy the conference tournaments anything you want to plug over on the power rank over uh, over on the uh the football analytics show yeah i've been doing a lot of work with march madness in my newsletter uh there will be except for sunday though there's gonna be an email every day that's getting ready for you to win your bracket and all the strategy and some of the analytics goodies that you're just not going to find elsewhere. Uh, most of them will be also posted on my site, but not not every single one. And certainly not the cheat sheet that will make it really easy for you to, to fill out your bracket if you're running out of time. So check that out at thepowerrank.com. I will also have some things going on on my podcast, the football analytics show. Uh, there's nothing up there right now, but as we get into next week, there will certainly be uh, some analysis there as well. So make sure you're subscribed to the Football Analytics Show there. Check out Ed's uh, newsletter by going to thepowerrank.com. Check out Ed on Twitter as well, uh, at thepowerrank. I'm on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Again, the NCAA tournament live stream is on Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern on the FanDuel YouTube page and up here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed after that. So subscribe on the FanDuel YouTube page or here on the Covering the Spread podcast feed to get that right as it goes up. Good luck to all of you with your men's conference tournament bets. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down some NBA and some UFC. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 